It's probably fair to say that Audi's offering of an electric SUV is better looking than the Audi 4 and the Skoda Enyaq, at least, especially in standard form. But equally in Sportback or ID5 or Enyaq Coupe trim, I think you'd still have to give it to the Audi. Now there's a couple of things helping it in its favour. This is an S-Line, which means it's tipping at about 65,000 euro. It's got upgraded alloy wheels, which are huge, and it's in Navara blue. And on the front, we've got matrix headlights, we've got a lovely sloping rear, a nice sloping roof line, and the whole thing just comes together very, very well as a package. That said, the Enya Coupe isn't even here yet, so it's probably a little bit unfair to compare it, although we have had a look way back in early 2022. You can have a look at that here on the link. But back to the Q4 Sportback, you can get it from about 47,000 euro with the 80 kilowatt hour battery, usable as 77 kilowatt hours. It promises a range of up to 500 kilometers, or so they say. Uh, it's about 10 degrees today, and I'm looking at about 400 kilometers on a full charge. It's got 201 brake horsepower, it's rear wheel drive, and in many ways, it's very much familiar to those of us who have had a look around at the Q4 since it came out about 18 months ago but let's delve into the boot for a second because it's very very good and let's have a look at the inside and see are Audi still delivering the best interiors even though they've got to get an EV version out of this car welcome to Lobby on Cars interestingly the Sportback version of the car has a slightly bigger boot than the standard car. It's 535 litres versus 520. And it's when you look at the back shot of the car, that's when you really go, wow, that is gorgeous looking. Aided by a daytime running strip or nighttime strip across the back, which looks fantastic, featured across many Audis. There's an e-tron inscription here on the lower part of the car. It's a deep boot. There's space for your granny cable, not necessarily for your Type 2, which is bright yellow and unused in this case, because I think it was the first person to review this car in Ireland. Um, so this is like brand new yellow, but at least it'll help people not trip over, because I find sometimes when they're black and it's dark, you don't really see them. There is a light, there's a couple of shopping hooks, but that's kind of about it in the way of gadgets in the boot of the Q4 Sportback. Parcel shelf isn't flexible either, but it does fit in to this part of the car if you want to drop it down, so that's handy. This version also has an electric tailgate on it, which takes the load out of just daily life. One thing that also goes in favor of this Q4 Sportback is the extra slope in the roof doesn't really cut into your headspace here. There's extra knee room, in fact, more than something like the Volvo C40 in the recharge. Uh, the one area that is kind of strange, there's no armrests and there's no USB-C charging, at least in the center console, and there's no independent aircon either. I find that very strange. I know Audi like to charge a little bit extra for different packs and stuff. For example, there's no nets on the back of these seats either. But it's something to bear in mind that you might want to spec in your car if you are considering one. An S-Line Audi is always a lovely place to sit. You've got wonderfully supportive bucket seats. S-Line is embossed into the stitching. There's a good armrest with space down here. I like the way you can keep a couple of cups down here in the cup holders, but also there's somewhere for your phone to slot in to the holder. And there's two USB-C charging options down here, as well as a bit more storage down below the gear selector, which it has a floating element to it, so that takes up quite a bit of space. It's nice that Audi have put extra storage uh, down here, although I would like to see wireless phone charging down below also. Wonderfully finished, as per usual. I really like this newer style of steering wheel from Audi as well. There's plenty of places you can grip it and hold on to it. Even the haptic buttons are okay. Don't have any issues with them. Cruise control is still your manual stock. Would love to see that in buttons somewhere else. Great resolution on the graphics, your infotainment system, and so much room over here uh, where you can store things in the car if you were parked up. Like There's just loads and loads of room. There's good shortcut buttons to climate control, heated seats, all those things. There's uh, thigh support extenders in the back of your seats. It's just a very comfortable place to be. And they have extra storage down here and also here. So for example, I've got a very sore throat today, poor me, got a box of medicine and that is buried and lost down into a storage pocket just beyond the grab handle on the car.
10 out of 10 for interior quality. Wouldn't expect anything less from Audi. There's also an optional uh, head-up display on this car as well, which has loads of built-in features, including your nav and lane assist is also displayed at the bottom of the windscreen, helping you keep your eyes on the road and to stay safe. But if you're ever in doubt as to who makes the best quality electric car interiors, I would put Audi right up there. In many ways, it's familiar territory behind the wheel of the Q4 Sportback because underneath the inner workings of this vehicle is an ID4, uh, a Skoda Enyaq, or ID5 in this comparison case of the Skoda Enyaq Coupe, which still, from what I can tell, hasn't got a price or a release date here in Ireland, even though I had a look at the car back in March of 2022. Anyway, not Audi's problem because this is the Q4 Sportback. It is a better looking version of the standard Q4 in the same way the ID5 is a better looking version of the ID4. Now there are seriously big wheels sitting in this car, so going over bumps, it gets quite bumpy, because that's what ramps do. So it's, uh, it's firm in a kind of an S-line sort of way, I suppose, and if you've ever driven an S-line Audi, you'll know, you know what I mean by that. There's a, a low, speed grown from the car to warn pedestrians and animals and seagulls and anything else that you're coming for them that's quite intrusive at, at lower speeds you know there's a, an awful lot of noise of it it's fair to say that an awful lot of electric cars just because of the extra weight the handling stakes aren't always what you might be used to and it's the same same goes for an S-Line, an S-Line typically has a lowered suspension, bigger alloys, I suppose, and yeah, you can expect a little bit of a, a harsher ride as a result of looking good and that more uh, taut spring setup. But add in the weight of an EV then, and it's a different kind of experience to what you might have expected from an S-Line in the past, if you get me. That said, the ID4, when I first drove that on 21s, I thought the exact same. It's firm, it's, it's planted, but firm. I think it's true to say that it's the same setup for this Q4 Sportback. Again, bearing in mind those bigger wheels, and if you use the power that's on tap, across a motorway driving experience of about 87 kilometers per hour of, of an average speed, I was able to achieve 21, 22 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. There's a good bit of the outside world going on. There's a good bit of tire noise of the car going on. The characteristics of this car certainly provide a firmer, slightly better handling setup, but firm is really the important word here. So if you don't like that type of suspension setup, you're probably better off just looking at the standard Q4 on tires that aren't as big. And certainly, in a, you know, if that's the kind of style of car you enjoy, an S-Line probably isn't the car for you. Where that does come into its own, however, though, is sharper roads with bends, and that's where you'll feel a little bit less, perhaps, body roll than you might get in something like an ID4 or a Q4. It's up to you whether the trade-off, though, in ride quality is worth it, I guess. There's never really a, a sense of um, lightness about the handling characteristics of, of this at all. It's an S-Line, but you're paying for the looks of the S-Line more than anything. Find a good quality road surface though, and it's absolutely impeccably behaved, really nice and smooth, handles the lighter bumps and imperfections in the road fine. Three levels of regen, you can activate that with your paddles, that works best generally below 90% because it needs space in the battery to be able to put regen back in and if you do that uh, it's not quite one pedal driving but as soon as you drop off the accelerator there is a noticeable shutdown of power like using the paddles you could actually brake not that you would use the paddles for that way but as soon as you lift off the throttle there's a noticeable decrease in the urgency it's a nice seating position as well if you like that higher up seating position, it will be well suited to you. All in all though, I think bearing in mind as a comfortable enough cruiser, 
a car with a good boost, a good family car, if you get me, when it comes to an EV. Because it's just, there's decent space inside. Even at the dashboard, there's tons of space. You could, I mean, it wouldn't be safe to do it, but you could if you're pulled up having a picnic. You could put half the food on top of that. Um, good size boost, good leg room for the kids in the back. Think of it that way uh, with an S line badge that makes it look good. And then you and the Q4 Sport back will get along just fine. As usual, Audi knock it out of the park when it comes to looks, interior and just all round desirability even when it comes to something like an SUV in electric. It's not cheap. When you get to S-Line spec, this really turns into an expensive car. But I guarantee you're still going to see plenty of the S-Line models around. So don't worry, there'll be someone there who will want one. And there's probably a Q anyway. So it's a better looking version of a Q4, which was just a great all-rounder. It's got, still got good charging capabilities in terms of speed. Great boot, 535 litres. That's just kicking the arse off something like a Skoda Octavia. Not quite, but it's getting there. So actually for a car that isn't quite a Q5 size car, but maybe has Q5 practicality and it's electric, it's worth a look. Thanks for watching.